Hello, my name is Keith Rucker and the guys over at Practical Machinists asked me to put together a little introduction about myself and do a shop tour uh, of my shop that I have here. Uh, so first off, a little bit about myself. I started working in a machine shop right out of high school back in the 1980s. I actually only did it for about two or three years doing a, uh, I guess you could call it an apprenticeship. It wasn't a formal apprenticeship, but it was uh, an apprenticeship done that's none the same. Uh, working in a machine shop, started out running a turret lathe, uh, eventually went over to starting to work all kinds of different manual machines, just doing job shop work as well as production work. My main goal when I got out of school and got a job in a machine shop, quite honestly, was I was wanting to save up money so that I could go to college. And after about three years of working in a machine shop, I did exactly that. And uh, after getting uh, several degrees in college, and uh, I'm working in a totally different field. I'm a scientist. I do research in agriculture. I uh, work down here in South Georgia. But the machinist bug, the making things bug, it, it had bit me and it had bitten me hard and I just couldn't get it out of my blood. I just have a love to be able to go out and fix things, to restore things, to build things, to make things. That is what I, that's really my passion in life. And over the last 25 years, I have slowly put together a collection of machines and uh, in the last four to five years, I've actually built a new shop got all my stuff out here and got it going. Another interesting thing that I guess that I'm eh, known for is that I am the creator, I'm the person who started the vintagemachinery.org website. So if you're not familiar with that website, uh, we are a repository for information on all kinds of old machinery, whether it be metalworking machinery, woodworking machinery, steam engines, uh, just really anything kind of old machinery-wise we've kind of found a home for it over on vintagemachinery.org. We've got a huge collection of uh, digital lit literature, uh, whether it be sales pieces, catalogs, brochures, uh, manuals, et cetera, and et cetera, et cetera, on over 10,000, I think we're actually getting close to 15,000 different manufacturers uh, here in North America that made machinery over the years. And uh, going all the way back to the, some, some of the stuff goes back to the early 1800s. Uh, so we're really proud of that. I can't take total credit for the site. Yes, I'm the guy that started it, but we're really kind of a team of folks, really all volunteers that really kind of work to make that website what it is. And I'm sure that if any of you guys have old machines and you've been looking for information, you've probably visited vintagemachinery.org. About five years ago, six years ago, I can't remember exactly, uh, I kind of branched out and started doing some YouTube videos. I started a YouTube channel and uh, I'm very blessed that my YouTube channel has grown and become quite successful. Uh, and what do I do? I basically use my old machines to fix old machines. Uh, that's really kind of what I'm all about. Uh, I really love restoring all kinds of machinery, whether it be other metalworking machinery. Uh, I do a lot of work with a local, uh, local museum. I'm a volunteer. Uh, where I work on steam locomotives, steam engines, cotton gins, sawmills. They have a basically an 1800s, late 1800s, early 1900s vintage uh, village out there. And, and I'm the guy that kind of helps keep all that stuff running, all that old equipment. So anyway, enough about me. Let's go around and take a look at the shop. Well, this area that we kind of started out in talking in, this is where, this is my bench area. This is where I do a lot of my bench work. I've got a couple of workbenches here and behind me is pretty much most of my hand tools. I have really all of my metrology equipment over here. So micrometers, uh, indicators, that kind of stuff. Plus uh, mechanicing type tools, wrenches, uh, Allen wrenches, you name it. Uh, if I need it for working on an old piece of equipment, it's probably in one of these mini toolboxes. Yeah, I'm a tool nut, I'll admit it. Uh, and I have collected quite a few things over the years and most of it gets used, believe it or not. Uh, there's, a lot, there's hardly anything in these cabinets that I have not used at some point in time. So this end of my shop is kind of my turning area. As you can see, I have a couple of metal lathes set up in here that I use quite frequently, at least a couple of these. Uh, first off, this green machine, this is a Monarch Model K 16 inch metal lathe. This is probably, well not probably, this is my workhorse lathe. This is what I probably use most of the time uh, when I need to go turn something. It is my go-to machine 
and it gets used a lot. I actually did a restoration on this a couple years ago. There's a whole series of videos of me working on this. Uh, fairly, fairly thorough restoration. I, I wouldn't say I took it completely apart, but uh, uh, we did actually completely disassemble the saddle. Uh, it was all re-scraped back in using hand scraping and so forth. Uh, a lot of mechanical repairs. I really didn't get into the headstock. It wasn't necessary. Uh, the bed on this machine, uh, while it does have a little bit of wear in it, it was actually in pretty good shape and we decided to just kind of leave it alone, not try to regrind it or anything. Uh, but this is my workhorse lathe. It gets used all the time. My second lathe that also is a good user for me, this is a Revet 1020S. It's a tool room lathe, 10-inch lathe, uh, and it is a super high precision machine. This one was built back in the 1950s. Uh, it was sold to the military, came out of a naval base in Idaho uh, where they do nuclear uh, training and so forth out there. Um, and Again, this is another one of my really go-to machines. So if I'm doing smaller work or super high precision work, uh, I will come over here and use the Revet. Back behind it, uh, I have a Monarch 10 E. This machine is a basket case. It is actually a future project. And right now it doesn't run. Um, it, the story on it is I got it from a machine shop a couple of hours from me. Uh, they were using it not too many years ago. The reason he quit using it is he had some electrical problems with this machine. And when he did, he literally just set it out in the front yard out in front of the machine shop where it's set for probably a year. Uh, and I found it and came and rescued it. And my plan on this is at some point in the near future, uh, this one's going to be a complete teardown rebuild. I'm going to com take this com machine completely apart every nut and bolt off of it. Uh, the bed will be reground. We'll totally rescrape everything on it, replace all the bearings. And hopefully when I get through with it, we'll have a practically brand spanking new Monarch 10 E. Again, a very high precision tool room type lathe, very similar capacity to my Revet 1020S. Over here on the wall, back behind my lathes, I have my collection of straight edges. These are all precision uh, straight edges that are used for machinery building, for scraping in ways and so forth like that. Uh, most of these have been re-scraped in by myself. There's a couple of them I still need to get done. I just haven't needed them for an actual project yet. That's usually when the scraping gets done on them. Uh, but I do a lot of hand scraping in my restoration work. And these are tools of the trade if you're doing any kind of machinery building. Next is my big lathe in the shop. And unfortunately, this machine is still kind of in restoration mode. I've done a good bit of work to it, but it's really not quite ready to use yet. And uh, this is another one that is pretty high on the list for me to finish up. Uh, in fact, I got a, a couple of restoration projects I'm doing right now. And this is going to be probably one of the next things that we just finally get in here and get finished up. But what this is is a Monarch lathe. It was built around 1962, has a 28-inch swing on it. And uh, I got this machine right after I moved into the new shop here. And uh, I'm really looking forward to get it going. I've already done a good bit of the work on this machine. Uh, the ways on it, again, they're in pretty good shape. I'm really not needing to do a regrind on this, but I am planning on taking the whole uh, carriage and saddle apart. We'll probably rescrape all that and do some work in, in that. Uh, but uh, the, the headstock, it all works. Uh, everything pretty much works on it. We just need to get it a couple of little small things done and uh, finish doing some cosmetic things to it as well. But uh, I've got a few videos where I've worked on this in the past, but this will be probably coming up here in the next year. Uh, we'll hopefully get this machine fixed and running where we can use it on projects here in the shop. And back here, kind of at the end of my lays, I have my big Carlton Zero uh, A radial drill. Uh, everybody says, man, that's a mighty big drill press or big drill, and, and it is. But ironically, this is one of the smallest model uh, radial drills that Carl Carlton made. Uh, four foot uh, arm on it, nine inch column, uh, again, one of the smallest ones they made. They made these things that were just absolutely huge. They wouldn't even fit into this room. Uh, but this is another one of my workhorse machines. I use it all the time. I had a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, who's got a shop up north of me. He's actually got two radial drills in his shop. And the first time I ever went up and visited him out many, many years ago, he told me, he says, Keith, you need to get a radial drill. Uh, when you do, you will never use your drill press again. He says, if you got to drill an eighth inch hole in a piece of metal, you're going to go over and use that radial drill uh, because it's so awesome. And it is. I mean, the, basically the arm moves up and down. I can come in here and, and I can move this head around. It swings around in and out. Um, you come in here, you can adjust it in and out this way. So instead of moving your work to position where you want to drill the hole, you actually move the head on the machine. Uh, it has a quill. 
that comes down to drill, kind of like a drill press, or you can just engage it. It has automatic feed on it. You can use this machine for boring as well as drilling. Uh, this one takes a number five Morse taper, so I can put a really nice big chuck in here, as well as even some machine tools. So again, really nice machine. I love it. This, this one uh, found in a shop up in uh, Columbus, Georgia. I did a little bit of research on this machine, and I do believe, I haven't confirmed it 100%, but I'm about 99% sure that this machine was actually bought. It was built in, I think, 1938, and I th it was bought by uh, one of the railroads, and they had it in their railroad shop there in Columbus, Georgia. Uh, I found it in another shop that had was they had, the property had been sold. A new owner had come in, and there were a few machines left in there, and uh, they were trying to get rid of them. And I rescued this one, brought it home, uh, did a restoration on it, and got her up and going. And, and I've got a series of videos on me uh, working on this machine as well. Another one of my workhorse machines in the shop is this Famco 5C Arbor Press. Uh, really. If you're going to have a machine shop, you got to have a way to press things. And uh, I've got access to a pretty big hydraulic press that I actually built out at the museum many years ago. But this is my go-to press that I use most of the time. Uh, it's a, it has two different modes depending on how you adjust the pins up here as far as how much leverage you can get on it. I use this thing for broaching. I use it for pressing. I use it for all kinds of stuff. And uh, when I'm out here working in the shop, there's rarely a day that goes by that, that this does not get used. Uh, really one of my favorite machines. I found this out in Texas, uh, bought it from a friend of mine, had it shipped over here, and again, did a restoration on it. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot that I had to do to it. There was a few little things that was wrong with this machine that we got fixed up. And again, we got a series of videos on uh, fixing up this old Famco Arbor Press. And now I'm over on the other side of the shop, and this is the side of the shop that we do more milling work. The first side was more turning work. This is more milling over here. And again, another one of my workhorse machines is my Wells Index knee mill. This thing gets used all the time. If I could only have two machines in my shop, it would be uh, a good lathe and a good milling machine. Uh, and that's just because you use them all the time. And I love this machine. I've had it about 15 years. It was made in the uh, early 1980s, which is a fairly new machine uh, in, in, in my shop. A lot of my stuff is a lot older, vintage machinery, obviously. Uh, but this one does get used quite a bit. And behind it over here, this is my uh, Kearney Tracker Model 2H horizontal milling machine. And while it doesn't get used as much as the uh, knee mill over here, the, the vertical mill, this horizontal mill, I use it quite frequently. And it's a machine that I really honestly, while I could probably get by without it, I, I really wouldn't want to get by without it. It really is capable of doing some very heavy milling. And uh, I use that horizontal setup quite a bit. It's set up right now for making gears. In fact, I made some bevel gears on this uh, just a week or two ago. And uh, it's still set up for that. And I'm going to be using it probably later this week to uh, do some work on spur gears. So uh, it gets used quite a bit, and I really love it. I'm actually really wanting to get a larger uh, horizontal milling machine than this one. I've had this one for probably 10 or 12 years. And uh, as handy as it is, and, and because of the, the, the size of a lot of the stuff that I work on, again, working on steam engines and stuff like that, I, I need some bigger machines to be able to handle that. So uh, I am, have been kind of keeping my eye out. It hasn't been real high on the priority list, but one day I hope to upgrade and get a little bit larger horizontal mill to, to go in here. So right inside the big roll-up door in the shop to the left when you come in, to the right is kind of that bench area that we started out in. But over here, this is my uh, kind of a general purpose work area. I got a big heavy duty welding table here that gets used almost like an anvil sometimes as well. So I've got about a one inch thick top on it. Uh, I got some holes in it where I can stick stuff down through the table and not get in my way. It gets used quite a bit. I've got some welders over here. I got both, a, a, well, I got a Lincoln Electric MIG welder as well as TIG welder. I got my torches over here. So a lot of my hot work gets done right here. Uh, above it, you see I have my gantry crane. Uh, this is another one of those machines that I really, I call it a machine. It's, I guess it's not a machine, but it's, 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 some, it's a very invaluable tool that gets used a lot in my shop. I did not realize how badly I needed one of these until I finally got one in the shop a year or two ago, and it is indispensable. Again, there's hardly a day that goes by that I'm not lifting something with this gantry crane. And again, a lot of the stuff I work with is heavier things, whether, again, steam locomotive parts, 
uh, parts off of sawmills and cotton gins and, and syrup uh, grinders and you name it. And it's just stuff that's a little bit too heavy to pick up by yourself. So having this gantry crane in here is great. Also doing the machinery restoration when I need to take a machine apart, we can just go there and pick it up. Uh, I use this thing quite frequently. Also some storage. I got just some shelving back here with all kinds of stuff on it. And then some more tool cabinets over here, uh, nuts, bolts, fasteners. Uh, and then these, these different toolboxes have a lot of my milling type equipment in here. So cutters, tooling, hold downs, you name it. Stuff that's really more specific for the milling operations that I do in the shop since that is over on this side. People that watch my YouTube channel regularly will kind of know a little bit about this area that I'm in right now because there really isn't anything here right now. I just, not too long ago, did a major rearranging of my shop, did a lot of cleaning out. I got rid of some stuff that I wasn't using anymore in order to get this more or less empty spot. Yeah, I got some sawhorses sitting here right now. But a uh, little teaser, I've got a new piece of equipment that has been purchased. It's down in Florida right now, waiting to get hauled up here. Uh, but I got about right at 10,000 pounds of vintage machinery that's gonna sit right here. And I'm real excited about it, and I haven't really divulged what that is yet. Uh, we're waiting to get a move-in video coming up soon. Uh, but yeah, come and see what it is. Stick around and watch my channel, and maybe you'll get to see something cool. We got something I'm real excited about. Uh, it's, it runs, I can use it right now, but at some point in time, it'll be a restoration project as well. We've stepped now back into the back side of my shop, and my shop is divided into two main work areas. Uh, my shop building itself, I built this shop probably about five years ago. It's 42 feet wide and 80 feet long, and I have it divided into two halves, so a front half and a back half. And when I first built this shop, my intention was, was that the front half was gonna be the machine shop, the back half was gonna be a woodworking shop. And I do still have some woodworking stuff in here, but over the last five years, the machine shop has really kind of uh, expanded faster than the woodworking shop and I've kind of taken over about half of the back side of my shop uh, with machine tools. This machine in here in front of me, this is actually my current big restoration project that I'm working on right now. Uh, I've been working on this machine now for about a year and what this is, is this is a, a metal planer that was made in the late 1800s, about 1880, 1890 vintage, made by the New Haven Manufacturing Company. When I got this machine, it was a rusty, pile of scrap metal and I have slowly taken it apart and I've been totally reworking this thing and uh, we're getting really close to being finished with this and making our first chips but uh, when I get through this machine I have no doubt that it's going to be in better shape than it was when it was brand new. Uh, we have taken the, the base on this was sent up to a grind shop up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They reground the ways on both the table and the base, reground the top of the of the table. Uh, once I got it back into the shop, I then took that ground surface that's getting completely scraped into itself. So this thing runs almost perfectly uh, on its ways. The whole upright and column, all of these surfaces that have bearing surfaces, all has been hand scraped and gotten back in. I'm working on the clapper box that goes on the front right now. And um, honestly, when I got into it, we had some fairly major issues with some bevel gears that were just completely toasted. And uh, it's, it's, it's slowed me down a little bit, but we're getting close to being able to get this thing put back together. Still got to get it under power, uh, but really the clapper box and getting power on it is about all that's left. And uh, we'll be able to use this. If you're not familiar with a metal planer, it's similar to a metal shaper. And if you're not familiar with the shaper, it's a, it's a single push type stroke. So you got a single point cutter you, you put your, on the case of this planer, you put your work on this bed. You have a, a, a single tooth, a single holder here that comes down similar to like a lathe tool that has a piece of high speed steel or whatever. And in the case of this planer, the whole bed and the work that you're working on goes back and forth in strokes and it goes across there and it cuts single cuts across there. Um, while in today's world of CNC equipment and, and, and automatic machines and a lot of the big, huge milling machines we have, this machine, quite honestly, is obsolete in today's world, uh, but it still serves a good purpose. And back in its day, this thing was a workhorse. It was the milling machine of its time. And um, it does, even today, they, they, they are superior for making flat surfaces. Uh, in many cases, they actually will outperform as far as flatness is concerned. A, a, a really nice milling machine. Um, the speed at which they operate, though, is extremely slow. 
I think they're cool. Again, I'm a vintage machinery guy, so I would think it's cool. I'm really excited about getting this in. Uh, also back here behind me, this is another restoration project. Uh, I purchased this, this is a, uh, I think it's a 26 inch do-all bandsaw. And I found this literally, it was a barn find. I found it in a literal barn on a farm. Uh, had been sitting there, it was in pretty rough shape. Uh, I had a student worker who's been working with me some this summer and he started taking it apart and got it at least cleaned up and primed, but there's still a lot of work to do this. This is another machine that will be a restoration project that we'll be doing some videos on coming down the road. Uh, again, th this one here is probably pretty high on the list for me to go ahead and get it finished up. Uh, really all that's been done to it so far has been kind of taken apart and some cleaning and, and priming type work on it. The bulk of the work is still yet to come. And then kind of back behind uh, the area over here with my planer and bandsaw, this is my grinding area of the shop. And I really kind of got all my grinding equipment over here in one area. I try to keep my grinding dust away from most of my uh, precision machining stuff. And eventually I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to build a little side shelter down the side of the shop and have a, a separate room to put all this grinding stuff in. Uh, but I do a good bit of grinding of various kinds. So right here is a, uh, uh, Surface grinder, this is a, it was an eight inch by 24 inch surface grinder uh, made by Landis. Uh, again, another machine that I use quite frequently in the shop. It takes big 10 inch wheels, a little bit bigger, heavier duty than your typical, you know, small uh, surface grinder like most people have. And again, working on a lot of the larger equipment that I work on, uh, I find this to be very handy out here in the shop. Next to it over here is a Landis cylindrical grinder so that you can think of this like a lathe, but it has a grinder instead of a tool cutter on it for doing precision uh, work, finishing up surfaces and so forth. Uh, this machine I brought in not too terribly long ago. I actually bought it from the gentleman that I used to work for in the machine shop back in the 1980s. I never used this machine. He didn't have it at the time. Uh, but he was letting it go, and, uh, and uh, anyway, I made a deal from him on it. Uh, it's uh, needing a little bit of fine-tuning to get it up and going. I just haven't had a job to use it on yet, but really with minimal time, I can have this machine up and going. And I've actually got a job I'm going to be using, for, using it on soon, so uh, this one's going to be getting some more little work done to it. And then back behind it on the wall, I've just got bench grinders, a, a big... Uh, disc sander there. There's some drill pointers over here. Uh, I got polishing wheels, wire wheels, uh, abrasive wheels, you name it, all your different grinding stuff uh, that you use in a shop. So kind of a dedicated grinding area back here. And yes, eventually I want to get it into a separate room. And like I mentioned, this backside of the shop originally was going to be my woodworking shop. And uh, I'm almost embarrassed to even show this because it is really a mess over here right now and not very usable. I've still got a lot of work to get my woodworking area really up to speed where, where I want it to be. Get a lot of my hand tools and stuff down here where they're a little more accessible right now. A lot of that stuff's not even in the shop yet. Uh, but this is some of my woodworking equipment and machinery. And eventually I hope to have this a little bit more uh, in use. One of the most important shop or tools in the wood shop is my workbench. I built this about 20 years ago. Uh, this is a traditional style woodworking bench, gets used. If I'm into doing wood shop work, this thing is indispensable. But as far as machinery goes, guys, I've got this big 36 inch crescent bandsaw. It's a wood cutting bandsaw. This is actually a restoration project. I'm kind of wrapping up. It's about 95% done. Really all that's left to do is I need to get the motor controls put on here, electrical stuff get it belted up and get a blade on it. The rest of the restoration is pretty much done. Uh, back here behind it, this is a 16-inch joiner uh, that I use. This is another indispensable tool in, in my book and something that get, gets used a lot when I'm doing woodworking. This is uh, for uh, getting a surface on a, on a board flat and square. Uh, before you send through a thickness planer, you should joint one side to get it flat. A planer doesn't make a, a board flat, it just takes it to a thickness. If that board has cup or twist in it, when you go through the planer, it's still gonna have that. The joiner, and particularly a big wide joiner like this, is really indispensable for getting a board flat. Uh, back over here is my table saw. It's a big uh, Delta Crescent 12-14 saw. It runs a 12-inch blade, or you can put a 14-inch blade on it. I normally run a 12-inch blade. I've got a 14-inch blade that I can use if I'm needing to saw something real thick. Also have a double disc sander back here. Uh, it needs a little bit of work, but uh, it does actually run, uh, but I need to do a restoration on it as well. There's a wood lathe back over here um, and just a chop saw for cutting. 
Uh, I actually have thinned out a little bit of my woodworking equipment. Oh, I got a, a shaper back here as well for doing molding and stuff. I have thinned out some of my woodworking machinery. Uh, of late, uh, gotten rid of some of the more specialized machines like a mortiser and a tenoner and things like that that really don't get used very often. Trying to get back to a little bit more of the basics because, and mainly because my machine shop's just taking over the shop. But there you go, my wood shop. Not gonna spend any more time on it and I apologize for the mess. Another one of the fixtures in the shop here is the old shop dog. This is Elliot and he's usually in here trying to find a cool place to lay down and rest. See ya, Elliot. Well, there you go, guys. That's pretty much going to be a wrap. Quick shop tour of my shop. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the toys that I have to play with. And guys, I'll tell you, again, I'm on YouTube. I encourage everybody out there, if you like what you've seen here, go check out my YouTube channel. I've got over 500 videos where we're working on different kinds of projects. Uh, everything under the sun, doing restoration work, fixing things, a machine shop, wood shop, you name it, just a little bit of stuff. I tell folks, uh, what you see me working on in the shop is pretty much whatever I'm working on in the shop. Uh, I've got a pretty large following over there on YouTube. I'm pretty proud of that. And we'd love to have you come take a look at the videos if you haven't already. So check me out. You can find me on YouTube under Vintage Machinery or my name, Keith Rucker. Also, I'm on Instagram. Again, Vintage Machinery on Instagram. I post a lot of pictures there as well as little quick videos of things that I'm working on in the shop. And uh, Facebook, my name, or Vintage Machinery, either one ought to find me there as well. And uh, with that, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, check out my social media accounts. Check out my YouTube channel, my Instagram, etc. And appreciate you hanging along with us and uh, taking a little quick tour of my shop. <music>